All right, and we are live. Hi, dear friends. Hi, Hi. Jeanette. Welcome. Welcome. I'm so, so happy to have you because I respect your work and I respect what you have brought to the world. Uh, something really, I feel like you are the messenger of the dreams or the right. dream world. And um, also the, the type of work you have brought, tarot, a different tarot deck completely. So welcome to my channel. <laughs> Well, it's it's lovely to be here. And um, yes, my tarot is different. And right from the beginning, I always promoted it as a different, a dream tarot. Um, the word tarot actually comes from terraccio, which just means card game. So it's a great misinterpretation when people look at tarot and believe that it's a specific way of reading cards, as though each card has a very defined meaning that one learns 78 meanings and then one can look at the cards. That's perfectly fine if people wish to do that. And that was a way that Ryder Wade, certainly that Alistair McCrawley, that many people looked at and looked at imagery as having specific meaning in different tribal groups and different ancestral groups. So if we went back to some hermetic tradition or alchemical tradition, the images were, were put onto the cards and individuals learned what those images specifically meant in the context of a particular tribal community or a particular spiritual community, and they still are used today. But that's just one very narrow way of looking at tarot because tarachio just means card game. So mine, which is the mystical dream tarot, the images come from dream. And over a period of actually longer than 10 years, the images rose and I write my dreams every morning and I also draw images. The images came together. Interestingly enough for me, as a tarot, I am not a, a conventional tarot card reader. As a child, I read playing cards. Now, playing cards, obviously, don't have many images on it. Yes, there's a king, a queen, and a jack maybe. Um, but that was my intuitive way of working with the, the what I call dream consciousness. In the waking consciousness, we look at the world and we navigate through the world through our senses, through sight and sound and hearing and touch and smell, taste. But these connect us to waking reality and help us to navigate to communicate, act, and react with the waking world. But our dream consciousness is not just the consciousness of putting the head on the pillow at night and sleeping and having images rise, but it's the consciousness of going within, focusing within, and allowing mental imagery to rise to consciousness. So we're altering our state of consciousness. It could be called trance. It could be shamanic journey. I like to call it the waking dream. We're sitting, we're sitting in the waking reality, and yet suddenly we are awake, so we're lucid. We're aware that we're awake. You're sitting in your room. I'm sitting in mine. And yet what happens? There are images that come as memory, and memory is image. We wake up in the morning, and we know where to go to brush our teeth. We know how to get into our car and drive to work because there's a mental image in our head that allows us to navigate. So imagination is the faculty by which we form images. So it's never just the imagination. It really is the imagination that's the royal road, as certainly as Freud said. These cards thus were all images that came to me in dream. And I put them together as a conventional tarot with basically the fact that we have 78 cards. We have a major arcana, a minor arcana. So individuals who have spent an enormous amount of time invested in learning the ordinary imagery of the regular tarot can still use these. But the virtue is those who wish to break with that and want to understand the language, the iconography of their own dreams, will look at the cards and the cards will tell each person something different. And as I look at the card, I, I like to use the example of one of my cards that's an onion. Each one of the cards has people and, and landscapes and, and different items and sacred, sacred pieces. But the one card with the onion was very interesting because the, the publisher, the editor had said to me, well, 
maybe you want to change this card. All of the other cards have people and places. And why do you want an onion? And I said, oh, well, that's a very important one from an important dream. And in fact, when you look at that onion, it can, first of all, look like something that's, you know, shiny and wonderful and perhaps in a still life. And it's an onion. And what does it do? It may remind you of the first time you ever had onion soup and you may have been with a beloved. Or it may have reminded you on the first day that your mother asked you to cut it to make a potato salad and your eyes began to cry. And so each time you look at that onion, you may have a different memory come. You may look at the onion and suddenly you see an apple. That day, that onion is telling you something about an apple and what does it mean in your life? An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Okay, so you're talking about health, but suddenly the apple's a poison apple and it's the bad godmother, the, the, the uh, stepmother rather in a fairy tale. So each person looks at the image and the image has a specific language and it is the language of dream. So it's, it's one way I often say to people, pull two cards at night, go to sleep. In the morning, when you look at those cards, think about your dream. And if you didn't have a dream, look at those two cards and see what they tell you. Don't look at the names on the cards. The names don't mean anything, but the images do. If that onion that day suddenly seems to have many layers, are there many issues that your life is dealing with right now? Is it sweet? Is it a sweet onion? Or is it a sharp one bringing tears? So all of the work really is about image. It's the iconography of transcendence that comes through the image. And the tarot is an amazing, wonderful way, easy way for people to begin. Because once they begin to work with it, they're really expanding their consciousness. We have a dream consciousness and we have a waking consciousness. And the more attention that we pay to the dream, the more that the images will rise to help us to be fully conscious in life. So that's basically my work. And that's that's the background of the tarot. So it's it's the mystical dream tarot. And I don't think I even introduced myself. I'm Dr. <laughs> Janet, Janet Pitolato. So anyway, that's that's a bit of an introduction on it. Beautiful introduction. I, I feel like I just want to hear you talking more and more. And uh, the your, the vibration of your voice is really beautiful. And uh, it reveals a lot of wisdom also. And <laughs> I'm so enjoying what you're saying. There is something about um, um, the tarot being like the content or the square that is allowing for the messages of the dreams to um, flow. And I feel like even images, I always say that images are sometimes also like um, the doors of oh, more profound yeah. messages that are coming from the unconscious uh, field. Oh, that's the, the image, the image is the doorway. And we hope that it's the gate of horn, which is the, the gate of truth. Um, when images rise in our mind, we can have fictitious images, the young girl who's sitting at a concert and dreaming of dating the rock star. Okay, that's an example of a fantasy that's created. It's an unreality, it's escapism. And that's, that's, that's not the gate of truth. That's, that's what we call the gate of ivory. And it all goes back to Homer and his wonderful story in, in Ulysses of telling us that there are two gates that dreams come through. And the interesting part about images and dealing with images, they are the language of the transcendent. So if we work through that image, but the little trick is like a visit to the Oracle at Delphi or at Kuma, the message that's given is a riddle. The image that's seen on that card may look like an onion, but it's not telling you have an onion for lunch or have onion soup for dinner or avoid cutting the onion because it gives you tears. It's asking you to look through it. What else is there? Is there a memory about that onion? Or is that onion turning into the poison apple? And if it's turning into the poison apple, there's a meaning for that. So I often say, in fact, I'll look at a card and I'll say to somebody, you know, you may look at, for instance, we, <laughs> we have the card of Nut and Geb. And it's the, the mother, or mother sky over, oh, and that's just the card that you have. Okay, yes. so it's, it's the union of something and it's the lovers, but it's the sky above 
and the earth beneath. Geb is the earth beneath. And Nut is the, 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 the dome of the heavens above us. And I often say the stars that are on her body. And if one goes to the tombs, I bring people to Egypt on pilgrimage. And to look at the sky where we're on the Nile on a cruise and that sky at night where there's no real light pollution. All of those stars are magnificent, but those stars are leading to something that's not even there anymore. Some of those stars have long since extinguished before we get the light. And so we begin to move beyond what we see into a myth. And the mythology truly has all of the answers for us. Sir Isaac Newton, one of the biggest geniuses on this planet, spent such an enormous amount of time plundering into mythologies because it's beneath the myth that we see the truth. Whether it's an ancient Egyptian myth or a Native American, whether it's a Celtic myth, it doesn't matter. They transmigrate with all of the images and meaning. And for us as modern seekers, we travel through that. We may look at that card and someone may say to me, well, but all I see is the moon. That's really what's drawing me. There's a moon, there are mountains in the background. Yes, there are the lovers, there are flowers in the front. If someone is looking and the moon seems to speak to them, the moon represents Luna. The moon represents those mysterious depths inside each one of us, the voice of the Sora Mystica. Inside there is a voice that seeks to rise in image. Your life may have things that are very busy and chaotic in the waking world. And yet the moon is calling you to hear the voice within, to hear that voice of Luna, of the, the voice of the spirit inside that rises through the altered state, through the dream. So you're quite right. The image is the doorway and that's the message. And the dream, the images that come, the manifest is not the answer. When one went to the Oracle at Delphi, her response was given as a riddle. And above the doorway, it said, know thyself, which meant you had to go home and figure out what that message meant. It did not mean what the external was about. It meant delving within. So the, the image hides a lot. And an image is worth far more than a million words for sure. Because every time you look at the card, the meaning changes. When I first presented this, and it was in a doctoral thesis for my, my psychology doctorate in transpersonal psych, I presented it and said, the images have meanings for me now. I have a dream dictionary now. The meanings will shift and change and expand and grow. And sometimes they may become opposite to what I see today because the image is not bound by the walls like waking reality, which is why a dream is not usually a conversation in words. It's in images. And they, the images pop in and out. They don't occur like a waking world visit. They're very different. And there's, there's reason for that. So the cards really are about dreams. And it really is about expanding consciousness. It's a, it's a, it's a trick. In fact, my doctoral mentor actually wanted me to present it as a tool for psychoanalysis, because that's really what it is. Instead, we presented it for a, you know, a public game, so to speak, but it, it really does expand your consciousness. It helps you to see. There are two points that have come to my mind when you, when you were talking. The first one is, how could you develop this way of delving deep because we have to have time and we have to have some disposition and maybe you have some practices that helped you develop this way of diving deep and the second thing also is that uh, i feel i feel that the yes it's a tool it's a good tool for psychotherapists and and universal uh, university uh, uh field but at the same time it's uh, it's a richness, it's, it's, it's a big tool to offer <laughs> to the public. And I feel like there is an openness. That, well, I uh, do. I have done it all my life. Um, I have a book out, Pieta's Tales, um, which basically is autobiographical, even though the publisher put it out as a, a children's book, like Le Petit Prince, The Little Prince, um, because it is a child who escapes into this magnificent world within um, well, most children were out playing in the street, riding a bicycle and going swimming. I was opening the door of my closet and I was going inside, closing the door 
And I used to tell my mother, I'm going places. And I would go places in that closet. Little did I know that I was doing what a shaman would do, go and alter the consciousness. I always had dreams. My teachers are the same as they were when I was four years old. Uh, my oldest memory is of one of those dreams. So yes, I've worked through the dreams my whole life. I have thousands of pages of dream study, but I do teach people. Um, my tarot, I have an actual course now that's online on taped on my janetpedalotto.net and it's intuitive tarot. It brings you through each card and shows you how the card can expand and have a variety of messages. And then I, I do work with people independently, where people study and work with their dreams to expand their own consciousness, to move through grief, to move through tragedies and difficult periods in their life. The dreams hold the answers. And when I'm finished helping them to expand and amplify that dream, I, you know, they're amazed at what one can see in it when one works with it. It really, it, it really is the way of entering into the depths in order to find the truth. And then I do offer classes on Tuesday and Friday nights every week. I've got dream chats um, and I have ancestral healing and then I do shamanic work with people. Mm. So you're quite right. It's a, it's a lifelong path and an initiation into the ancient mysteries because that's exactly what you're doing. You are each night being brought into that sacred temenos inside. The dream images rise and the communication with the deceased. Um, it is a place where we meet those who've passed away, not just in a memory of them, that's quite different, but we wake with that feeling. We don't wanna wake. You know, my, my, my session last night where people, I bring them into a waking dream, which is a lucid dream when you are awake, altering your consciousness to see something inside. And most of the comments, well, we don't want to come back. You know, we prefer to be on this other landscape because it is a reality. And that's what people don't see. I'm sitting here with a virtual background and it's the Gaia Anderson Museum in Old Cairo. The homes are 11 to the 17th century, but I choose it because there are two houses joined by a bridge beneath which there's a genie in a well. It is like our two parts of consciousness. It's the waking consciousness and the dream consciousness joined by that liminal bridge. And we need to stand on that bridge and join both sides. We're not fully awake. God bless. We're, we're, born, we're born of the waters of forgetfulness. We don't know who we are. Our parents give us a name. And this flesh is only a vehicle by which we move through the world. So it is the dream reality. And yes, this is a beginning for people. You know, I, I created a line called Imaginelle years ago, and it was the image of Hathor, the golden image of the goddess of love in ancient Egypt. And it was my way of honoring the divine feminine that I was bringing an image that has great meaning to many people in the world that no longer are connected with a religious or a spiritual being. And how many people, I work with stage four cancer as well, how many had no religious beliefs anymore, but they had that icon next to them, you know, and bringing them the, the solace and the compassion of something that was beyond them that they knew they weren't alone anymore. So in a way, it really is a spiritual path, which yes, can be begun because somebody might be attracted you know, to the cover and say, oh, well, I like tarot. And then some might be angry because it's not the same old tarot that everybody is used to, which I've never said it is. And I wouldn't want it to be. I, I'm no expert on that. But it is way to help people heal. Um, you know, it's not just a game for sure. If you if you give two exercises, if you, you can give us two exercises to do with this deck. Uh, well, already you talked about uh, having two cards before we sleep. That would be a good practice. Do you have another exercise that can help us dive deep in this time? Yes. Um, what I tell people to do is to enter the waking dream. So during the daytime, what we don't, most people don't realize is that we live on a 90 minute cycle called an ultradian rhythm. It means that we're working like you and I right now at the computer. And all of a sudden, an idea may pop into our mind, um, something that um, 
we're not thinking of someone maybe from long ago. Um, perhaps it's a, an event. Uh, Halloween just passed. And perhaps as a child, we did something and we're suddenly remembering. And I'm remembering going to a house where there was a very lovely man who, who actually gave me a silver dollar bill, you know, the, the, with money. And, and as a child, you know, usually you got a few little pieces of candy corn and he was so kind. And that image is coming to me right now out of nothing. It has nothing to do with you and I. So what I tell people to do every 90 minutes, this happens. And I believe it's part of really our evolution. When we started as hunters and gatherers, we could not sleep an eight hour night. We had neighbors that we had to worry about. We had wild animals we had to worry about. We had weather, we didn't have safety. So we catnapped. And it's interesting because we still do that. Every 90 minutes, we either want a candy bar or a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, or we've got to take a walk or somebody wants a cigarette but they need that break. And that break is the old tradian rhythm. And that's when thoughts bubble up and they're important to pay attention. So now I paid attention to the fact that this lovely man gave me a, a silver dollar and I open up the deck and I pick just one card. And that card is a card of a lady giving something compassionate. And so what is it telling me? It's saying, pass it on. This man was good to me. I was a little kid and that, that, that dollar meant something to my parents um, as a surprise. And this card now, perhaps there's something in my life that I'm able to help somebody else. This card has come to tell me that. And it's telling me that this man that meant something to me then, say a quick prayer for him too, because obviously, he's still there. He's obviously passed over. He was elderly when I was little and I'm getting ready to join him. But the fact being the cards will help us. If again, we're in something and we look at the situation and we say, oh, it's so frustrating. I want this to be over. And this is what's coming in the middle of work. Maybe it's a problem in a relationship. Maybe there's a financial problem. Maybe there's a, a school and you're studying something, but you're working during the day. And all of a sudden that thought rises and it's like, oh my God, I'm so frustrated about this. I want it to be over. All right, so let's pick a card. <laughs> okay, and, and you'll see how it's perfect. It's the hangman. All right, and my hangman shows that there's a mermaid coming from the depths, holding him. The time is burning at the top. And at the time you see all the fire and you, you see the smoke. And the face of the hanged man is smiling. Why? Because he's in the middle of a mess that he can't do anything about right now. And he's just gonna let it be. It's like the serenity prayer. Help me with when I can do something about it, but help me to know the difference when I can't do something. So here I am. I'm giving the example of school is coming, there's a test, I'm worrying about it, or a relationship has a problem. And the hanged man is saying to me, just hang on now, be patient, time passes, and you'll be all right. He's got a smile, just let it be. This is not something you're gonna do anything else about, stop fretting. So that's, those are two of the ways, and in fact, the next card is the onion. <laughs> and the onion, the onion has many layers. And if this were me with that issue, I would look and say, ah, there's many layers to this issue that I'm looking at. And I'm only seeing one. And that's what's frustrating me. There's many, many layers in there. And you know what? It's going to be okay. I'm just going to wait and watch what happens. So the two ways are having the cards available during an ultradian rhythm, during an image that rises, a memory that rises, that kind of perplexes you as to why has it come? But the really powerful way it is, they are dream cards, is to use it right before you're entering a shamanic journey, a meditation, um, a waking dream, which is what I do with my people. And it very much is a shamanic. The shamanism, I will use a drum and I'll beat on a drum or I'll, I'll shake a rattle. It's a little bit different. But if those two cards are placed and at night I look at one and one I leave not not to look at. Mm -hmm. I had my dream. 
I write my dream in the morning. And then I look at both cards. How do those two cards relate, expand, and awaken me to something else in the dream? And they really do work. Um, they really do help. And if you've not had a dream, this works magnificently because you ask each night, and I would tell all of your listeners, some we do dream every night, even if they don't remember it. If you don't remember your dreams, but you would like to, put a little pad by your bed and say, I am going to dream tonight. I want to dream. Take two cards. One you look at, one you don't. Go to sleep. You wake up in the morning, put your alarm on for 20 minutes before you need to wake up and make it be chimes, make it be something a little gentle and don't pop out of bed. Think, okay, I don't remember my dream. No, no, I do, I do. And you keep on telling yourself you do. What do you do next? Well, I was, where was I in the dream? Um, I was walking down the street and begin to make a fictitious story. Because what happens is something we call amnesis. One of the words, something is going to click and say to you, oh, that's really where I was. And if not, put yourself in a place. I was walking down a street by a house I lived in as a baby. I'm all alone this day, but there's a rabbit running across the, the front steps. I enter into that house and what do I do? So you want to know where you are and who you're with. Are you the observer or are you a participant? And what are you doing? What's the action? So who, what, where, when you're answering the questions, make it up and then look at your two cards and then think of the story you made up, how the two cards expand. Maybe they tell you a little bit more about that, that, that made up dream. And then look at your life and think what I just wrote how does that enter into what's happening to me here and now, right now? And see if you have something. Do that every night. And I will tell you within days and sometimes weeks, you'll wake up one morning and say, I don't have to make up a dream today. I really remember it. And, mm -hmm. and another, another way for the adventuresome is drink a nice big cup of water or tea or something before you go to bed. And you will wake up during, you have a dream every 90 minutes at night. The beginning of the night, they're a bit short. At the end of the night, which is why we remember the last one, it's the longest dream. You will wake up to use the bathroom right after you have your dream. And if you pay attention, you'll have dreams all through the night. I mean, I have as many as four dreams at night and I remember them. And yes, I have my tea with me because I want those dreams. I want to know what's going on in my, my other reality. So the cards can be used to expand what you're seeing because really it is your fingers that are shaking and moving them. So the energy within you is going to pick the right card. It's going to pick the card that you ab absolutely need. Like the card that says, you know, here we are on something new. We have the scarab rising. And on the walls in ancient Egypt, in the, the tombs, in the valley of the kings and queens, what do we see? We see the scarab rising with the sun. This is new life. And, and if this is your card, you look at it and say, yes, something new. I'm at a new door in my life. So the cards really can help expand the imagery that we have. But the language of the dream, of the dream consciousness, which is the language of the cards, is the image, but you have to understand it and put mm -hmm. each and every one of us. And that's my next book next year, which is Dreamgate. And mm -hmm. it will, it's, uh, it's coming out in the fall of next year. And it will teach people how to follow their dreams and understand their dreams. Um, I was asked to create a dream dictionary. And I said, no, I said, we need to teach people how to write their own. And so that's what that's what that's about. Totally, uh, I understand that totally. Um, for those who are who like writing their dreams, I have created a, a journal, dream journal. So I will leave the link below. That may help um, help you record your dreams. I have two last questions before we end your, the conversation with you. So good, so nice and hi, uh, Descendancy. Thank you for being here. So the first question is about the colors of the deck. We find that there are some some colors like you have chosen 
this um, tones of blue, but we find or orange and pink sometimes. Uh, I don't know if the, it's it's pink, but anyway, we have these tonality tones of colors. How did you try? How did you choose them? Was that is it like this that you have your dreams? Well, no. the The original dreams were far more colorful, and uh, actually, just the colors on the cards were reduced due to the publishing, due to the actual expenses. Um, but if I were to show you the actual images, and the cards were done over a period of over ten years. So the, the use, I used gouache, and sometimes I used uh, watercolor. Um, each, each one was a little different, and we had to tone it all down to use for the cards. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that would, at least each one would blend. But the, the original cards, the original deck that I have, which, which is a deck that I produced in a very small way, um, that deck has the original colors in it. So it's, yeah. It's, uh, and the second and last question is really, it's, it's, I feel like, yes, maybe we lost on the, on the colors, but we gain on the availability of the deck. I'm here at the moment in Portugal. And when I go to the grocery shops or go to the, um, the, to send my decks. Um, of, of no, my, and, that's, of my... and that's very, that's very true. Um, yes. my, my original deck of, of dream and vision um, was very small, limited, obviously. And yes, it had all the original colors and it's just like the internet, like you're in Portugal now and, and there you are. Um, it's down under in Auckland and Sydney and Melbourne. It's been translated in Hungarian and in yeah. French and in, in uh, Portuguese uh, and Spanish, I think, too. Portuguese, yes. And um, it, it's in several different languages. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I had to give up the original colors, which honestly I liked much better. So I'll just <laughs> say that. Um, but it, it was able, we had to give something up in order to allow the cards to get out there. Yes. And my question is mainly about what would be the message of the dream world? Because your work is really available worldwide now. And, and there are a lot of also other authors that are talking about the dream world and they are the carriers and the messengers of the dream world. So what would be the message of the dream world now to the humanity? Uh, to humanity, I think without the dream world, we're only half alive. We need the healing. Um, our waking reality, especially since the enlightenment, we believe that we need to see, hear, smell, touch, taste, and feel something in order to consider it reality. Reality to this modern world means the physical world, the world that is outside of ourself. The dream world has been discounted. And I mean, I spent years on my first doctorate in science, so I'm well aware of what the dream world you know, would be looked at in a scientific view. It's not accepted. And yet it is the world that's going to heal us because inside the dream are the answers of our true nature and the answers about death. The last few days and weeks have been about the day of the dead. There's been about all hallows and Sow and Samhain and all saints and all souls. And most people look at it as a little holiday where children like myself, went knocking on people's doors for trick or treat, but we said happy Halloween and we were given candy, but that's not what it was about. It was about opening consciousness, opening the door of the house, putting a jack-o'-lantern on your step and one on the grave so that all of the ancestors who passed away would come in and the table was decorated and the feast was made and the Holy Communion was with all of those who passed because death is a life, it's an afterlife, like the books of the dead in ancient Egypt that I teach. It's not about death. It's about us passing through the gates of sorrow and challenge in life to open up that final gate. So the dream is the royal road to understanding who we are and it will heal the hurts. It totally. truly will. That's totally. what the dream is. Yes, uh, Normandy Ellis and Carmen Soronti also, they, they were uh, in this channel and they were telling the same or something similar about uh, the, the, the dream world. And I thank you very much for sharing this message again with us. And I hope to welcome you another time. I mean, it's well, really it's, lovely it's, to talk to you. <laughs> it's, it's such a pleasure to talk to you. And you can always find me at janetpitolato.net. Um, where my courses are and certainly where information about dreaming is. So 
Much luck to you. And this was wonderful to speak to you today. So enjoy the rest of your day.